Hello the internet and welcome to another CNRL Library Innovation Studio Home Workshop where we show you how to grow your own veggie patch. Today we're going to talk about the frost. Now where I am the frosts have passed because I live in Tamworth and on the October long weekend that's pretty much the last chance you're going to have to get frost. But that's not true everywhere, not even locally. Depending where you are in the world, even locally to me, your last frost might be on a very different date, depending on your elevation, depending on how close you are to a river or the sea, even your longitude and latitude can make a huge difference to when your last frost is. So recently when I suggested on Facebook that the last frosts were over, I had a few people in Walker point out that that's not necessarily the case at all. So in this short workshop, we're going to show you how you can protect your seedlings from frost. All you're going to need is your own ingenuity and a few things from around your house. What you have might be very different from me. I'm going to explain what frost is in a second, and that'll give you a good idea on how you can protect your plants from it. But what I'm going to be using today is some pots, a big old blanket, and maybe, if I get a bit desperate, a hot water bottle. So what actually is frost and what causes it? Well, frost is a deposit of soft white ice crystals or frozen dew drops on objects near the ground. You'll often hear about the frost point. Now that's just the temperature at which moisture in the air will condense as a layer of frost on any exposed surface. If your plants freeze, all the liquid inside your plants freeze as well. They turn to ice crystals and that is going to rupture the cells of your plant, causing them an awful lot of damage. So we need to cover up the plants on any night where the frost point is in danger of happening. Because cold air sinks, this may be different where you are. If you're in a very low-lying place, you may have slightly cooler ground temperatures than are predicted in your area. And I guess you're going to get to know this from observing the weather forecast and observing the effect it has outside. Basically, if you get to a night where it's going to be four degrees or colder, it's time to cover up your plants. It's best not to risk the danger of them getting destroyed by frost. So basically what I'm doing here with these pots is I'm making sure that I'm rising up the level of the blanket so it doesn't squish my seedlings. So I put a few of these along here and a few back here. I'm not doing the beans, they're pretty hardy actually, but these carrot seedlings and these beetroot seedlings, they definitely need some protection. There we go. So now when I put my blanket on, it won't squish these. The best time to do this is when it's still daylight. You want to have the ground as warm as you can, you want to trap some heat under here. So it's best to do this before the sun sets, which means you're going to have to keep an eye on the weather forecast. Now, if like me, sometimes you leave these things way too late and you're running out in the middle of the night to do this, the ground's already pretty cold. It's still worth doing it. You don't want to just give up on your seedlings, definitely cover them up. But uh, what I do, and I hope this helps, is I get a hot water bottle, fill it up with hot water, and I put it in here as well cover it up and hopefully that'll radiate some heat and give it a bit more of a chance to survive the frosty night. Now because we don't want heat to escape and because we don't want moisture to seep in, it's important that whatever covering you use does touch the ground. I've got plenty here, that's not going to be a problem. You also don't want the wind blowing it away. So again, using whatever you've got, just secure it down for the night. Now once morning's come, even though the frost might still be visible on the grass, it's okay to remove the covering. So that's what we're going to do, and it's also a great opportunity to water your seedlings as well. We hope you enjoyed this gardening workshop. Please like, share and subscribe so you and others can join us on the next CNRL Library Innovation Studio online workshop. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, all the usual places at Innovation Stew or hashtag Innovation Stew. And check the Home Workshops page on innovationstew.com.au for extra resources. See you next time and happy gardening.